I'm going to show you some more graphing options. We've been doing graph options here. We're going to make a typical graph. And we've got some kind of neat glitzy graphs, too, if you want to put out a different type of graph. We've got thin lines and thick lines. We also have this type of a graph, which you may want to give to somebody. Make a printout of that. We have bar graphs. We have a tape graph. This is sort of a three-dimensional looking graph. Now these graphs are not real good for making comparisons and stuff. But they do look kind of glitzy. And this is what you're going to see in magazine articles and such. So if you're uh, kind of a good, you want to do a screen capture and put a fancy looking graph in a report or something you're putting out on the web, you can do it here. Um, and let me show you something else here. With these three-dimensional graphs, we have some 3D options here. And in this screen, you can change the look of the graph quite a bit. You can use the default, which is this, and it shows you a little preview of what the defaults look like. Or you can say, nope, I want to do something here, and I want to change, let's say, the rotation. I've got a minus 30 in there now. Let's see what a plus 30 looks like. If you look at it from that angle, an eye level, that's how what you're viewing it at. I'm at 20 now, and I'm going to put a minus 20, and obviously I'll be viewing it from underneath. The depth of the graph, I'm going to go back to 20 because it makes a lot more sense. I'm going to go back to minus 30. But the depth of the graph, that is how thick does the graph look. If I put in 20, it looks pretty thin. Perspective is how much, uh, I'm going to go back to thick because it will show up more for this perspective thing. And I'm going to go to a tape graph also. This perspective thing is how uh, much depth does it look like there is in this. Uh, basically, the more perspective, the shorter these lines here are going to appear than these. If we go to a lot of perspectives, 60, let's say, you can see it looks like there's an awful lot of depth between the front here and the back. So, and if you're not sure, you can just go to this default, and it's going to pick something for you. But you can see you're you're stuck with what it decides to do, and I personally don't like what they do in default. So I'm going to go back to I think we're at about 30 for that. So I think that's pretty pretty good looking and. Uh, and uh, you can see what you got there. Now I'm going to show you here real quick. If you had a, um, what are we going to do? Which cylinders? All cylinders. You can see, you can make a real mess out of this. And it's not very useful for uh, doing analysis of what's the difference between this flow and that flow and the exhaust and stuff. So this is just eye wash. But if you want to make a cool looking picture, uh, you can do, I didn't want to do that, I wanted to do format, line styles, and go back to something like this. Now you can actually do more useful work with that. Another feature we have here is you can right click on these different titles over here and have those be hidden, temporarily hidden. For example, maybe you want to highlight just this green one and this yellow one to uh, to a customer or something. So what you can do is go through I'm right clicking on these and that's the only two you got left. I can go back and right click on where I think these other ones are and turn them back on and maybe turn that one off. Then we can go here is go over here show all graph lines and they all get turned back on or you could have just clicked right clicked on all of them over here. Um, we did talk about the history log and uh, the the tests that you have a yes in this bo this column here are the tests that are going to be graphed. And you just click on it to get rid of a yes, click on it again to put a yes there. There is a limit, I think it'll only graph up to six tests uh, is the limit. And you can see if you got uh, eight ports, four intake and four exhaust for all four of these or maybe six of these, you can see it's going to be a very crowded graph. So, But it, we will let you do it. And over here, the history log is also nice and useful for giving you a nice little overview of
what the max intake CFM was for the particular test and the exhaust valve diameter max, max exhaust CFM that we saw on one of the ports and, and such. There's a lot of good information here, and you can print this if you want, print a nice list of all these things out. You can erase the history log by clicking here. Um, and like it says here, you can graph the test that are just marked yes by clicking here, which I'm going to do. And you can see there's a lot of stuff going on here. Or you can just uh, either click on single test here or go into the history log and click on graph current test only. We covered it in another one, but if you just r normal click, use the left mouse button, you will see that you'll get a line to flash. It's help, it helps to identify when you've got a whole bunch of graphs, like if we do this again, which light green graph is this one here? And you say, oh, it's that one. But we've got a light green graph down here, and that's this one here. So the, the flashing is real helpful also. I'll go back to single test. A real useful feature, especially if you want to send your your results over to a customer or something, is file. And you can do different types of printouts. Print colored lines in solid lines. They're in different colors, so you can tell the difference. Or you can print things in black and white. It would be different dash line styles. You got your Windows print options here. This is where you select what kind of printer you're using and stuff. And we also have under file these two email options. The email options work exactly the same except the 16 color requires you to have MS Paint on your computer and for you to have found MS Paint in the preferences section. Um, if you haven't found it, the program has a pretty good idea where it probably is. But uh, the 256 color graph, they can be very big. They can be about 2 meg or something, which is pretty big. If you email it in 16 colors, you're going to lose almost no quality of the graph, but it's about one third the, or one fourth or one fifth the size. A much smaller file to email, and but you do have to. It has to go through MS Paint. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to show you what's happening here if we do this. And it says, like it says here, it's going to start up MS Paint. And while Paint is running, don't use your keyboard or mouse. And you'll see why in a second. Because what we've got to do is we've got to actually go over to MS Paint. And we're running MS Paint, some commands that we have programmed in. And uh, it's doing this all automatically, going through a bunch of them. And now it's going to go to my email. And it's going to have a, an email address up here. And you can type in whatever you want. Maybe you want something different. Maybe I'm going to go feedback. And as you, as you do this, as you type in new email addresses, it's going to keep adding them to this list. So they'll be here for you to work with. So I'm going to do that, feedback at performancetrends.com, which is another of our email addresses. And I'm going to type in something. Something like that. Some kind of comment. You can type in anything you want and send it. This little thing pops up here. And where did my little thing go? Send it. Yep. I shouldn't have moved that. I just would have. I just could have clicked on send. But now we've sent that email with that graph. Now just show to show you how this works, I'm going to open up my Outlook Express, my inbox, and here I got the email. I double click on it. This is what your customer would be seeing, whoever you sent this to. You maximize this, and here you got your notes up here. This is the size of the file, 200, 224K, which is much smaller than if you did the high resolution one, which would be a 1 to 2 meg. And there's this graph and your comments right here. So this can be a real useful feature. So we've covered many of the features that you can do in the graphs. Uh, check out the user manual section 3.3 and the index, graph and other things like scales and zooming to uh, find additional things that we may not have covered in these movies.